All right. So today, uh, let's dive into something uh, pretty fascinating, I think. Okay. The world after the Oval Office. Ooh, interesting. We're talking about what happens when a U.S. president, you know, finishes their term. Yeah. You might think it's all like golf games and memoirs and stuff. Right, right. But trust me, it's way more complicated and interesting than that. It really is. Like way more. It's a strange mix of immense privilege and serious restrictions. Yeah. All shaped by, you know, history security concerns mm -hmm. and this ongoing role they play on the world stage. Exactly. And it's not just about the president themselves either. It's right. their families too. Yeah. They're along for this whole wild ride. Absolutely. So buckle up because... We're going to uncover some uh, surprising facts about post-presidential life. Okay. That might just change how you view power and freedom in a democracy. Let's start with something many people don't realize. Oh. The 22nd Amendment. Oh. This limits presidents to two terms, which has hugely impacted how they approach their legacy and what they do afterwards. Yeah. Before that, it was a bit of a free-for-all. Right. Like, imagine being president for 12 years straight. Oh, wow. Like Franklin D. Roosevelt. Yeah. Yeah. It complete changes the game in terms of long-term planning totally. and how they use their influence. For sure. Speaking of influence, yeah. one of the biggest changes for presidents after leaving office yeah. is the constant presence of the Secret Service. Absolutely. The assassination of JFK was a turning point. Right. Since then, Secret Service protection has become incredibly tight yeah. for both former presidents and their families. And their families. In fact, no president since Lyndon B. Johnson has driven a car on public roads. Wow. No more spontaneous road trips for these folks. Nope. I guess that million dollar annual travel allowance doesn't buy you quite the same freedom as it would for the rest of us. True. That allowance does serve a purpose, though. Yeah. It's meant to facilitate their travel for diplomacy. Okay. And representing the U.S. on a global scale. Okay. Former presidents often have relationships and knowledge. Yeah. That can be incredibly valuable in those situations. That makes sense. It's like their expertise becomes a national asset. Right. Even after they're out of office. Exactly. But even with a million dollars, there's still so many restrictions. Yeah. I remember that incident in 2018 when someone sent suspicious packages to former presidents Obama and Clinton. Yes. That highlighted the constant security concerns. Right. Because of incidents like that, even something as simple as receiving mail oh, wow. becomes a carefully orchestrated process for former presidents. Mm -hmm. The Secret Service screens everything off-site to check for potential threats. Well, no wonder they can't just order a pizza on a whim. Right. So what other everyday activities become more complex with this level of security? Well, even something like grabbing a coffee becomes an elaborate production. Really? When Obama wanted to go to Starbucks, mm -hmm. the Secret Service had to block off a significant portion of the street. And if he wanted to play a game of pickup basketball, okay. they needed four hours notice to secure the location. Wow. Talk about losing your spontaneity. I know, right? It's almost like they live in a parallel world, even though they're still technically part of ours. It's a unique existence, that's for sure. Yeah. And it's not just about physical safety. Okay. Former presidents can't even buy any electronic device they want. Yeah. They have to get approval from the Secret Service okay. to ensure it meets their security standards. Wait, seriously? Yeah. So no late night online shopping sprees for these folks? Not without a thorough security check first. Wow. Remember when Donald Trump had issues with his personal devices being hacked? Yeah. That's a perfect example of why these rules are in place. Right. The risks are simply too high to ignore them. It makes you wonder if all these restrictions ever make former presidents wish they could just opt out of the whole security thing entirely. They actually can. What? It's not recommended. And the Secret Service strongly advises against it. Right. But it is an option. Wow. Richard Nixon, for instance, chose to waive his Secret Service protection later in life. Interesting. I guess he felt that he was no longer a target. Perhaps. And Donald Trump Jr. also declined protection, well, then. citing privacy concerns. Oh, interesting. However, for most former presidents, the potential risks are just too great to go without that level of security. Speaking of risks, hmm. does being a former president offer any kind of legal immunity? Hmm. Could they you know, break the law and get away with it just because they used to be the most powerful person in the country. Not at all. Okay. Once they leave office, they're treated just like any other citizen under the law. Okay. No special privileges. Gotcha. 
we've seen this recently with the legal scrutiny faced by Donald Trump. Uh -huh. Being a former president doesn't make you above the law. That's good to know. Right. Accountability applies to everyone. Absolutely. So we've talked about all these restrictions, but let's not forget about the perks. Besides that million dollar travel budget, what else do former presidents get to enjoy? Well, one significant perk is established by the Presidential Libraries Act. Hmm. This means every president gets a library named after them. Oh, wow. Which houses all the non-classified documents from their time in office. So it's not just a place to borrow books. Oh, definitely not. These libraries are vast archives of everything, okay. from official correspondence and memos to speeches and even personal notes. Wow. They're incredible resources for historians, researchers, and anyone who wants to understand a particular presidency in depth. And do they get to choose what goes into their library? Well, they can't exclude anything. Oh. Everything created during their term is considered public property. Right. But they can influence how certain topics are presented. Interesting. So you'll find information about Bill Clinton's impeachment in his library. Okay. And George W. Bush's library covers the Iraq invasion. Right. It's all there, warts and all. Transparency is key, right? It's fascinating to think that these libraries aren't just about the past. Right. But also play a role in national security. Because, get this. Former presidents continue to receive national security briefings for life. That's right. They're not expected to take action based on these briefings. Okay. But it allows them to offer informed advice to the current administration right. or speak accurately about current events if asked by the press. Right. They have a unique perspective and a wealth of experience to draw on. It makes sense. It's like they're part of an exclusive club. Yeah. Forever linked by their shared experience of leading the nation. Right. But you know what really surprises me? What's that? The fact that former presidents can't just buy any electronic device they want. Oh, yeah. It seems like such a small thing. Right. But it really highlights the extent of the security measures they live with. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. That restriction, along with things like the Stingray devices used to track their locations. Okay, hold on. Stingray devices. Yeah. Those sound a little intense. What exactly are those? They're basically cell phone trackers that the Secret Service uses okay. to monitor the location of former presidents. Uh -huh. They're not listening in on conversations, Okay. but they can pinpoint someone's whereabouts. Yeah. It's yeah. all part of that ongoing effort to ensure their protection. That's pretty wild. It really makes you think about the trade-offs yeah. these individuals make when they choose to run for the highest office. Absolutely. On one hand, they get to lead a nation-shape history right. and have these incredible experiences. But on the other hand, their lives and the lives of their loved ones are forever changed because of it. And it's not just about the security measures themselves, right. but also the mindset that comes with it. Imagine never being able to just blend into a crowd, always having to be aware of your surroundings. Exactly. Every decision, even something as mundane as choosing a restaurant, right. has to factor in security protocol. It makes you realize the level of freedom most of us take for granted. And that got me thinking, do you think former presidents ever miss the anonymity they had before taking office? It's hard to say for sure, but I imagine there are moments when they long for a simpler time. Yeah. I can only imagine, speaking of impact...